All right, welcome to the review for May 28th, 2024, and we're going to get straight into it. We don't do any of the intros, none of that stuff, straight to price action. So we are going to start with the indices, stock indices. We have the S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones right over here. And then let me just fix my chart real quick. All right, so now they all look the same. So we're just going to look at the S&P. They all trade pretty much the same. As we can see, we've been in this bullish trend. So let's focus on the S&P. So I'm going to put on my key levels and I'm looking at all this stuff for the first time. So bear with me. Um, this is a raw review. First thing first, when we look at the higher time frame levels, we are within this range. So if I measure from here to here, 20 days is right here. So within this low to this high, measuring the range, we have equilibrium with the orange line, and then we have the 20 to 30% here, and then 20 to 30% of a discount right here. So we retrace back into here. I'm seeing if price wants to make a higher high, or are we going to reject within this order block right here and go lower? What's the threshold for that order block? It's just going to be mean threshold right here. If we close above this green dotted line, so that's what, 53.38? If we close above that, then the S&P and most likely the other stock indices are bullish and we're probably going to continue to make higher highs going into the summer. So that is what I'm looking at right now. Also, why this imbalance is also important is because it's within this breaker right here. So we have the daily breaker with the imbalance. This could send price higher if we get through the mean threshold of this order block so now if we drop down to a 12 hour chart you can see the imbalance right here that would be within the order block and we did close fully through the imbalance so that is good remember if an imbalance is going to send price in the other direction we don't want to see it get fully closed but this one was fully closed so this is a good indication if we're going to continue um, being bullish and then on top of that we have this balanced price range right here so i'm going to delete this order block from the daily chart remember this green line is mean threshold we hit mean threshold right here drop down into this balanced price range why is it a balanced price range because we close through this imbalance right here so if i put a line on it right here we close up through that and then we have this fair value gap within this bigger imbalance so that is a balanced price range so after hitting mean threshold we drop down into it and you can see um, this is the candle that we're currently in and we've had a nice reaction off of that balance price range and then Just dropping down to a four hour chart We have a imbalance right here. We drop down into that imbalance and once again If we can get above these down closed candles So this would be a bullish order block change in this state of delivery We would also most likely close through mean threshold of that daily order block and then this can send price higher because today's only Monday and um, or today's actually Tuesday. Now I'm thinking it's Mondays because we just we're coming off Memorial holiday. So today's Tuesday. We have some high impact news on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So that can send price up into here, depending on how fast we get there. It might be a end of week reversal. Not sure yet. Like if we hit this on Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, we can see some type of retracement back into this range. However, right now, the target if we close above these four hour candles would be up here and then that is it for the s p oh actually let's go over a trade that i took in the s p today so this is that big daily um fair value gap let's delete real quick and then we can delete this right here so this is the regular trading hours gap the way that i plotted on my chart is I have this tool made by two degrees. It's the dynamic RTH gap. And you can see if I toggle it on and off, it just plots the new day opening gap, but based off of regular trading hours. So if we go to regular trading hours, that gap from, in this case, Friday, because like I said, Monday was a holiday, Friday's closing price at 415 to the opening price at 930 um, today at Tuesday. That gap, I'm going to plot that automatically for you. So let's go back to electronic trading hours. And once again, this is made by two degrees, a very good company that makes very good tools. So going back to the trade that I took, so let's 
toggle on some executions and this one was taken in a paper trading account it wasn't taken in a live account or any um prop firm accounts reason for that is the day after a holiday i don't like to trade with any live money so, but i will get in price action just to get myself back to used to price action because it's been a long weekend so this was taken in a paper trading account and you can see i originally sold five contracts bought back three well actually let's go down to the smaller time frame that i used easier to see so i sold five contracts here bought back three down here and then i moved my stop to break even so it came stopped me out for the final two at break even and then as price started to trade lower um i realized we were going to sell side liquidity which is what i was trying to target on that run so i got back in with my two contracts that was taken out at break even and then I just wrote it down until we took out this low right here. And I bought back the two down here. And so now let's get into why I actually took the trade. So going back to that five minute chart. And as always, blue shaded areas, London open, New York open right here, AM session, PM session. These are the I like to trade for stock indices. So what I was looking at was we had this fair value gap right here that overlapped with this breaker. Why was it a breaker? Because we took out sell side. So this swing low, we traded below it, then traded higher to take out the buy side, and then eventually went below this low again on a closing basis. So that would be a bullish breaker. And then within that bullish breaker, we had a fair value gap right here. And then additionally, if I go over to the NASDAQ, notice how the NASDAQ is making higher high, making me higher today right here at 1.40 p.m. But if we go back to the S&P, the S&P was not making high, so we have divergence here. So even if I measure from that high where the divergence was created down to the low, use my optimal trade entry preset, you can see that price comes back to optimal trade entry right there. So we have optimal trade entry um, after S&T within a bearish breaker in an imbalance. So a lot of things showing me that price is probably going to attack lower and then additionally if we go back out to the 12 hour chart so like the icing on the cake or our chart actually so go back to the 12 hour first so we had the 12 hour imbalance right that was right here so that balance price range so these gray lines was the 12 hour imbalance however on the four hour chart we had this imbalance here so what i'm going to do is just draw a box on it and then i'm just going to make it gray so we had this imbalance within the 12 hour imbalance. And then additionally, if we go out to the NASDAQ, we had the 12 hour imbalance here. So we had the 12 hour imbalance on NASDAQ. So when we go back to the five minute chart, so the entry that I'm taking is in this run here, that's in the S&P. So notice how the NASDAQ hasn't reached its 12 hour fair value gap yet. So we have a clear target on the NASDAQ. And then on the S&P, it hasn't reached Remember the gray box was that four hour imbalance it hasn't reached that. So we have two clear targets that price may reach into. So a lot of things um, working in the favor of being bearish. So then now, once I have all of that on um, based off the higher time frames, now I'm dropping down to a one minute chart. So after we trade up into this um, fair value gap breaker, we have a change in the state of delivery here. And I close below that up close candle. So that's a bullish block. And then additionally, we have on the 30 second chart, a shift in market structure right here. So let's label that market structure shift. So we have the market structure shift right there. And why is this low an important low? Because if we measure the imbalance right here, 50% is at 5315.75. And the low of this candle, if we look at the top left up here, when I hover over it, is equal to 5315.75. So this is a swing low that comes to at least consequent encroachment of the imbalance. And I teach teach this in my free Omni model course. It's also my only course. And any other course that I potentially make in the future will also be free. I believe education should be free, but I'm not gonna rant too much on that. Let's get back to the trade. So this intermediate term low, when we take that out. Also changing the state of delivery on the one minute chart and then all the narrative that I've given you guys based off of the higher time frame chart. Now, when that happens, I'm just dropping down to the 15 second chart and we have this imbalance right here. 
So this in balance, let's just draw a line on it, make it black. We have this in balance. So when price comes back up into the imbalance, I went short on this candle right here. And then my first target was the high end of this imbalance. So we have that right here. We had this imbalance as soon as price dropped into that. I wanted to take off three because I sold five up here. Take off three. And then, like I said, I moved my stop loss to break even. So you see, I got in at 53.16 and a quarter. And then it stopped me out at the same price. And then as price started to trade lower, what I was looking at was, so I'm going to delete this real quick, is we had this inversion fair value gap right here. And I'm going to, at the end of this, going to attach the execution video so you can see that none of this stuff is hindsight. You're going to see all these levels on my chart so you know that this is exactly what I was looking at. However, we had um, the inversion fair value gap. Let's make that gray. So when price closes through it, notice how the bodies are respecting the high end of that fair value gap. So what I'm looking at is, okay, we went up, but we didn't outside of it. We're within these volume balances. So this is indicating to me that this was just another retracement and that price may go lower. So when we start to trade beneath it, I personally, on this candle right here, I was looking for price to come back up into and tap just the bottom end of the inversion fair value gap. And I was going to go short, but as you can see, it did not do that. So now what I'm looking at was this long wick right here, I'm looking at consequent encroachment of the wick. So now, boom, we close through that. We hit it twice. We start to sell off. We create a volume imbalance. So as soon as price comes back up into that volume imbalance, that is why I went short on this candle right here. But truthfully, I really wanted to get short at the low end of the inversion fair value gap. But you can't force price to give you what you want. You just have to work with what you're getting. So like I said, I'm going to attach the execution video at the end. And you're going to see the inversion fair value gap consequent encroachment of this wick using it as an inversion level the order block the breaker everything and then i got out here within the well i didn't get out exactly at the four hour fair value gap but you can see where price was reaching to because it hits it has a retracement but my actual exit was at the low right here I'm not trying to be too greedy and then for the rest of the day you can see we hit the bottom end of that balanced price range on the 12 hour chart and you can see that we've had our reversal for the pm session which is pretty nice so that is it for the stock indices let's move on to the dollar index so i haven't looked at the dollar in probably over a week now so let's delete some of these levels so actually let's go out to the weekly chart so what i've been looking at was we've been in this consolidation for a long time so it started around January 2023 and we've just been range bound between this high and this low ever since so that is the range I was looking at on the weekly chart and if you've been following this channel I've been bullish on the dollar even during these drops down here I'm still something just tells me that they're going to attack this high that is where I think price will go however like I said before with the stock indices um you can only work with what price so if this was to start to melt then I will get in sync and trade lower for these lows. But I'm still bullish on the dollar. So now let's drop down to the daily chart. And so lately we had these relative equal highs. We dropped down all the way down into this bullish order block. And then price started to rally higher. We have this reclaimed order block. That is if we measure from high to low. So from high to low, use the market maker preset. We have 20 to 30 percent right here that lines up with this reclaimed order block. So when price went above it, comes back down, touches it right here, rallies higher. Then we retrace for a second stage accumulation and then we've been higher ever since. So this is why I've been bullish on the dollar based off of this bigger market maker model. So we have that right there and then at equilibrium. So these orange lines right here, we have this breaker right here and you can see we close through the breaker for that second stage reaccumulation but then once we go back above it we come back down into this order block and there are some imbalances on a smaller time frame and you can see the reaction that we've had ever since and so we didn't have enough steam to get through the um the 
premium 20 to 30 percent on strong basis yes some bodies close above but you can see we've really been hovering around it stopping within this volume imbalance right here so prices drop down let's extend that out let's delete this and delete this so prices drop down into this imbalance notice how the bodies have not closed through the imbalance but if you remember from the stock indices um when we were going over that that ideally you don't want to see an MC closed in full if it's going to support price in your favor so this indicates to me that we have to wait for more to see if the dollar is truly in fact very bullish or if it's just going to range bound or flat out reverse but we have hit the breaker again we've started to get some movement we've closed through that imbalance but so let's draw that out here make that gray we close through it then close through it again so the only thing is that we close through it on memorial day so i'm not really a big fan of that of that like indicating that oh bearish um i don't really consider any holiday trading we'll see what the dollar wants to do um i don't really trade forex i haven't forex in a while it's not really a asset class that i'm interested in you can see just been range bound it's really only a scalpers model and day trading model and then there's some weeks here and there where you could be a weekly trader but other than that i really i wouldn't recommend swing trading or even weekly trading even though there's some weeks where it's good i wouldn't really recommend doing that in forex and then when it comes to forex it's really not the most scalper friendly asset class due to its high spreads um if you scalp the for if you i mean some pairs where spreads are like two pips and your stop loss is supposed to be five and your take profits 15 pips now your take profit has went from a two to one because you had what a, a five or not two to one three to one because you had stop loss and a 15 pip take profit to now a seven pip stop loss and a 13 pip two profit so you went from a three to one risk to reward ratio to below a two to one risk to reward ratio so that is why i say forex is not the most scalper friendly model doesn't mean you can't make money but there's other asset classes that are in my opinion better but i am bullish on the dollar um i would really love to see it above these down close candles create that bullish order block and then let's rally relative equal highs here relative equal highs here to see it do it like with a lot of speed i mean we spend a lot of time down here already but like I said, Forex is not the best market. Let's just drop down to a four hour chart, see if there's anything there that's important. Nothing really there. Nothing really on the then. We have traded into this imbalance right here. So that was a nice reaction to see off the imbalance. If we measure from this high to this low, 20 to 30 percent, the reclaimed order blocks that are within that. We have this one right here. And then we also have this one as well. So we've closed above one. We haven't closed above that one. If we were to close above that one, then I would use this one as my main reclaimed order block and not really look at this one. However, it could just retrace into this and then rally higher. And then let's see if there are any imbalances on a smaller time frame within that. So first, let's make one of these. So the lower one that we had on the four hour chart, that's the green one. And the bigger one is going to be the gray one. So within the gray one, we have an imbalance right here. And that's just about it. It could technically run these lows and come all the way down here. But like I said, if we're bullish, I don't want to see imbalances be closed in full. So we do have this range from here to here at the moment. Now that can definitely change optimal trade entry. So this would be an optimal trade entry. Um, it would also be within this breaker, 15 minute chart. So we have that breaker right there. So if price does drop into here before closing above here, we would be interested to see the reaction that we have on the dollar and see if it wants to create either like the scalping version or the day trading of the Omni model. And then you can use that to trade Euro USD, GPB USD, all the other foreign asset classes or pairs and look for them look for shorts in those so then let's just go over today's price action 
So there wasn't really too much today. So let's delete that. So there wasn't like too much today. We consolidated during London. Our manipulation move right here. And then we drop down lower during New York open. So let's actually change this Forex. So we had London open. We go up, make a high, drop lower, consolidate, go higher, or drop down into the order block, then go higher, come down during London close to this fair value gap right here. We only hit the high end of the fair value gap, and then we continue to rally later on in the day. And then we just drop down to a five minute chart. So this is the order block that I was saying right here. It's actually right there. So we have the bullish order block that can easily be seen on the five minute chart. So we have all this consolidation. There's really not too much you can do here, but then once we rally above, come back down, I personally wouldn't be in this trade because of time of day. I'm only lo really looking to take trades from the New York Open until 11 o'clock, really. I don't really like to take trades after 11 o'clock if I'm trading the uh, dollar, but you can if you want to, as you see. And then let's see if there were any, if there was anything within any of the Omni models form. So prior to New York Open start, the range that we had was from here to here. And then we have the market maker right here. So let's see only one minute chart. Are there any breakers or reclaimed order blocks within that? So we do take out this high trade lower, but we don't really take out any sell side. So I wouldn't say this was a breaker. We do take out this high trade lower to take out this low. So you could classify that as a breaker. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm only gonna use the top candle right here the high end of that candle we close through it close above it close through it again close above it and then close through it again close above it close through it so in terms of news look at what news we had today so this is another tool let me just fix it that two degrees makes that is pretty cool and let's just look at the euro dollar index make it tiny so in terms of news, we have high impact at 10 o'clock and then we had medium impact at nine. And then if we look at 8.30's opening price, so 8.30 is right here. So at 8.30, we close through it, close above it, close through it, close above. We wouldn't be looking to take any trades within the dollar because we've already used it twice and I'm not trying to use a key level more than twice. So. There was no Omni model to go long in the New York open session. And then let's see for the London close session. So high to low, low to high. Measure that. Looking for a reclaimed order block or breaker within that range. We do take out sell side, go higher to take out buy side, go lower. So we do have a breaker here. However, we close through that and we don't come back to the breaker. So I wouldn't use that. And let's just go over here. We have this swing high consecutive up close candles. One, two, three, four, five. So we can use this up close candle right here. And like I said, I'm working uh, through this for the first time, looking at it for the time. So this is actually how I go and view the days. So we have that. And once we close through, we close through it again. So yeah, I wouldn't be, um, or the Omni model I teach was not applicable. Forex and then lastly let's just check or I can just look at the actually let's see so from 10 and the way all I'm doing is looking at the last four hour candle so if this candle was to start at 2 a.m then I'm looking at the 10 10 p.m to 2 a.m range so 10 p.m would be oh, actually let's change this there we go so 10 p.m will be right here and we do have a dealing range right there so we have from low to high drop down to a one minute chart so from low to high, do we have any breakers within 20 to 30% of the range? Take out this high, we have this right here. Boom. So then we take out the high, we do close below it, come back to it, close below it. Boom, rallies through it right there. We drop down to a 15 second chart. So the first instance was we close below that one minute breaker. We have optimal trade entry right here. So OTE, we have that here, optimal trade entry, and then we go lower again. So for the model, you would want to see another optimal trade entry. So 
So in this case, you would want to enter right here at equilibrium with your stop loss right here. However, obviously that would have been a loser. And then you get a second opportunity to enter again. So right there. Now it is interesting that you would think to take this trade because you have the breaker right here. So we take out the low and take out the high. If we close below it, that would be your breaker. We didn't close below it. So that could be a potential reason for why this was a loser. However, let's go back to the other one. So we make the high, we start to trade lower. We have the breaker first off. So we close below the breaker here. But before we close or hold on. Before we close below the breaker, we have this same reclaimed order block right here that we close below right here. So we close below the reclaimed order block, come back up to it. This was clearly this was clearly a trade entry. So let's go 15 second chart so you can see it better. I know we have a lot of lines on the chart. This is the life of a trader. So we have this swing high that we can actually draw it from because the bodies don't go above it. So from that swing high down to this low, it will be after this candle. So this is the candle that we close below because we open a new candle at 323. So we will start here and it's drawing down to this low right here. We have optimal trade entry here, or you can enter right, not enter, but it can stop right at this high right here. So this will be the original optimal trade entry. So the only reason, only way you would take this trade is if there is SMT. So I'm not going to go through Euro so we can get to the other asset classes, but feel free to go in your chart, see if there was SMT between the Euro or the British pound. And if so, then you can take this entry right here on those pairs. So boom, we have that. That's the original optimal trade entry. And then price starts to trade lower. Boom, draw your fib. You can enter right at equilibrium. So we do have balance price ranges right there. This volume imbalance, and we trade through it. We measure that back out. So the volume imbalance right here, you know what I'm talking about. So that volume imbalance, that's a balance price range. So we would enter right there. Our stop loss would be right there because we never close above this high. So our stop loss is there. And then take profit would be a two to one. So we could take profit right here at two to one right away or within this imbalance right here. So just a few pips lower right there or the 70 to 80% of the range right here. So those are all potential first targets. So you would have been stopped out here. This is just me glancing over it really quickly. If you did take that trade, stopped out, but then you get another opportunity to get in. And it's a two to six R, so you should be able to make back your money here and then some. But that's another reason why I do not like Forex. So let's move over to, let's look at oil actually. Let's see what oil did. Oil had a nice day. So let's remove the drawings and let's hide the news. So oil looks nice on the day. Let's hide this also. So within the last 20 days, let's see where we have been at. So there's no range in the last 20 days. So we go to the last 40. So after today, because why after today? Because this is not a swing low until this day closes. So prior, so to the, like on this day, we wouldn't have used this range because there was not a swing low. You would have looked to see if we had a 60 day higher low and we did. So you would have used this range in the last 60 days. And then just market maker preset. You can see we've just been hovering around that 20 to 30 percent of a discount just hovering around it we did close below it just take out the sell side and then we can see what's been happening now looks like it's gravitating towards equilibrium so after today the range is now going to be here so this is our new equilibrium so this is where um i would expect price to reach to to equilibrium up here we do have a balanced price range here so the balanced price range here Ideally, you want to see it get through that and get up into this balanced price range. And then we'll see what it does once it gets there. Is it going to go higher and go for these relative equal highs, which is possible? Or is it going to hit this and continue to go lower and trade into this imbalance down here? Not sure yet, but the only thing I know is that on a scalper or day trading basis, I will be bullish until we get to equilibrium in crude oil unless it just hits this balance price range and really gives up the ghost and really starts to tank very fast on the smaller time frames 
So that's pretty much it for that. Let's just go over the actual price action of the day. So we just continuing Monday's uh, bullish run from the holiday, and then we just continued higher. Um, I can look at price right now and tell you that there's probably not. But let me not say that. <laughs> I'll be wrong. I don't think the Omni model was present today. And this is typical. This is why I didn't want to trade the day after a holiday. It's a price action's much more higher probability um the following not the following day but the day after that so yeah there's really nothing we just consolidated had a run consolidate again and just pushed pushed up higher in the day reaching for that equilibrium then going to bonds in the daily chart the last day of traded bonds april or not april february 6. so let's take that off and test it so in bonds this is very nice we traded up into this imbalance hit it well, let's make sure it hit it what's the high end 1826 and this is the, oh we actually fell just short of the high end or the low end in this case of the fair value gap so we just fell short of it and we ended up going lower we're trading down into this fair value gap right here at the moment so is this going to support price and send it higher up into here or is it going to use it as an inverted fair value gap and go lower attacking the sell side? If we go to a weekly chart, we also we did not fall short of the fair value gap there. We hit the weekly fair value gap right there. So that's what I'm looking at for bonds right now. Do we trade through that? Come back to it, give us our omni model day or scalp inversion to go lower, or is it going to reject? Give us the omni model going bullish in bonds. And then just looking at the 15 minute chart, looking at the five minute chart. So we trade up. So this is the range that we were working with prior to the AM session. We have this range right here. We trade up into that deep premium level, wick up into these imbalances up here. And then on a one minute chart, if we use the retracement swing right there, any swing highs. I'm really on the one minute chart. Let's go to a two minute chart, three minute chart. So we have this swing high right here. So we do have this reclaimed order block on a three minute chart. So if you look at the pre precision and bonds, we hit the reclaimed order block and then we tank and go lower. The only thing is, and why I don't like to trade after a holiday, is you see, like, we trade below it, come back to it. Create a chain of state of delivery, but then we just start to consolidate around there and then we hit it one more time and then start to tank. So that's why I don't trade the day after a holiday. But if you were day trading, then you could potentially enter within here. And you have the volume and balance right here that it fills in and then goes lower. So that is it for the market review, and I will see you guys in the next video tomorrow.